Well, hello there, and uh, happy after Thanksgiving Day. I had completely forgotten. Oops, I'm on the wrong camera. Whoops, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, hey, Lily is in the house. Welcome, Lily. Um, as I was saying, with the wrong camera on, happy after Thanksgiving. I completely forgot it was Friday, and I had a live video to do at 5. So I am completely unprepared, but it's okay. We'll make something work out and have some fun. So uh, welcome, Lily. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I had a great one. Lots of cooking and baking and, of course, lots of eating and uh, some football watching. So it was great. It was very fun. Just me and uh, my, my family, my immediate family. So it was awesome. So um, what are we going to do tonight for our demo? Well, um, I think I'm going to do a Dutch pour of some sort because I have a lot of Dutch pour paints mixed up. And um, hey, Dee Dee, thanks for joining us. And um, and we'll see what happens. So uh, let's see here. I've got a panel over here, and I'm going to grab it. And uh, Monique is here. Hey, Monique. Hope you're I hope you're doing well. Um, so we're going to do another uh, Dutch pour demo. And uh, since I'm completely unprepared, because I totally forgot about the demo night. So Karen is here. Hey, Karen, Dolores, Deborah. Hello, everybody. Um, and I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday. Um, I can't believe it's Friday. It felt like Saturday all day, and to me anyway. And then, and then uh, about six minutes ago, I remembered, oh my gosh, it's Friday. I've got a live demo to do. Whoa. So I am totally uh, unprepared in every single way, but that's okay. We'll make something work. Um, first of all, let me show you, I did a demo, a pouring demo uh, uh, Thursday night, and that was for our members only Q&A, and I didn't really have any questions to answer, so I answered a couple of them uh, that came in, and then I just did a, a Dutch pour demo. So I'll show you that one. I did, um, I have two of them to show you, the same color palettes, and uh, let me flip the camera and I'll show you what I got. And let's see here. Let's flip over here. So here it is. Oh, that looks a little dark. Let me uh, fix that super fast. Just a second. I'm just going to mess with the uh, exposure a little bit. That looks a little better. Okay. So, so anyway, so here is the demo I did. Sorry about the uh, all the paint below that. This was like the demo paper, but this is the little demo I did in the uh, members only Q and A, and it turned out kind of nice. I I wanted just a little bit of the gold in there, and this is a split complementary color palette. It's uh, yellow, and then blue violet and red violet, and then on a white base coat. And I only used a small amount of gold as the yellow because I wanted that to be kind of the accent color and it turned out pretty nice. We have like a few little cells in there, um, but I really quite like what happened. And let me take this one out of the way. And then I did one before that. This was kind of a, a little test painting I did. This is a nine by 12 with the same exact color palette. I was just kind of testing things out. And I think that one turned out pretty nice too. So I'm going to do another uh, Dutch pour demo because uh, I have a whole bunch of paint mixed up, and we'll see what we can make happen. So let's, uh, I'm going to move these out of the way and get a new panel and get my paints out, and we'll start blowing them around or something. Okay, just one second. All right, so here we have a 14 by 18 uh, panel. This is one of my uh, panels, cradle panels. And let me pull some paints over here. I have got some white. This is all Dutch pour stuff that I had mixed up previously. And let's see here, I got white and let's see, what else do I want? 
I've got some gold. And what else do I have? I've got some purple. These are all just uh, paints that I had mixed up. So we'll just use some like leftover stuff. And here is a kind of a red violet. And what is this? Oh, uh, you have some more gold. Here's an orange. Let's throw some of that in there. That might be kind of fun. I'm not going for any particular palette, really. I'm just kind of grabbing a bunch of leftover stuff I have laying around. Um, here is, this is some metallic white. Maybe we'll put some of that in there and see what happens. What else do I have? Oh, I have this color. This is a kind of a fun color. I did a, I did a test painting uh, a little while ago, um, kind of the same colors. It was a blue and a purple and a gold, and it was awful. I hated it. So I just scraped it all off, put it in my little cup here, and it turned out to be this uh, really pretty, uh, very muted kind of lilac purple color. It looks probably like a, just a gray on the uh, on the camera, but um, I put it in there. I was like, that is a very pretty color. So you never know kind of what you're going to get when you mix a whole bunch of stuff together. So I always like to keep my leftover paint and put it in a cup and then stir it up and you get some really cool blends of uh, paint. So maybe we'll throw some of that in there. What is in here? I've got some black. That might be a little much, but eh, let's throw it in there. Why not? Is this Dutch pour stuff? This might be just regular black. Sorry for all the crunchy. Um, I think that's just regular black. Maybe I'll not use that. Um, here's a yellow. This is kind of a, uh, what is this? That's no good. That's not a Dutch pour color. Um, let's see here. Just checking out uh, my Dutch pour paints. Here is a little bit of a Payne's gray. That'll like a little, little bit. That'll work though. I know what I'll do. I'll take some of the black and I'll pour it in here and I'll get a stick and I'll get a little water and I'll squirt some water in there and make it uh, Dutch pour paint. So just like that, we'll just mix up some leftover stuff and all right. So that is looking pretty good, maybe a, a touch more. So I'm just uh, flying by the seat of my pants here because um, I didn't prepare anything for our demo. I was thinking uh, about it, about what I wanted to do. And I was going to do some kind of a gadgety technique, um, like, like a funnel pour or maybe try another marble pour. But since I completely lost track of time and what day it was, I didn't prepare any of that stuff. So uh, that looks pretty good. I think we'll, that's, that's great for the Dutch pour. I'm gonna get my stick cleaned off. All right, so we've got a whole bunch of different colors here. Um, we've got some gold and white, some purples. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen with these. I'm just looking for anything else that might be fun to try out. And, oh, I have some blue. Oh, I have a bunch of blue. So here is a bunch of blue. This is a blue violet that I had mixed up before. Maybe I'll make a, I'll do a split, a split base coat, maybe. I'll put white on one part and the blue on another part. And uh, that might be fun. Let me get some of my stuff out of here. So... And let's see, let me move my paints aside and make a little room. All right, I need gloves, my gosh. Let me get some gloves. And, okay. All right. So I'm almost ready here, and I've got um, two dryers plugged in. I think I'm going to use my big dryer for this one, my great big one. Let me grab it. 
So here's my big, this is my big Orlith one. So I'll give this a shot. Let me see if it's plugged in. Nope, it's not plugged in. I better plug it in. One second. Okay, we're ready to go with the dryer. All right. So, Dutch pour time. I'm going to flip back quickly here uh, to me. Hello. Um, welcome to everyone else who joined us um, in my hastily put together live video here. Um, I hope you all had a great uh, Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. Hope you, hope you had a wonderful holiday. Um, I am kind of in a food coma still from all of the pies from yesterday, but uh, it's good. So I have uh, lots of paints we're gonna mix up. And I know in the membership this month, we've been working on the Dutch pour. And I talked about this a bit in the Thursday night video, uh, which was our Q and A. Um, uh, and I know a lot of people weren't there because of holidays and they were traveling or doing other things. Um, but I know some members have been having difficulty with the Dutch pour and uh, don't feel bad about that at all because the Dutch pour is a very difficult technique. It's not like a flip cup where you just flip it over and then you're done. Whatever happens comes out. I mean, there's a lot in a lot to the Dutch pour, um, and there's a lot of stuff you have to get right. I mean, you have to uh, mix your paints to just the right consistency. Um, you have to have just the amount, right amount of base coat, pretty much for your uh, to blow to layer your paints in. Um, and then dealing with the blow dryer is a completely different set of problems. I mean, all the blow dryers are different. Some are more powerful, some are less powerful. Um, and just getting the feel for that takes some time. Um, so don't get too frustrated if you're just struggling with your Dutch pours. Um, you know, it takes, it take, took me quite a few. I don't even remember how many before I got one or two that I kind of liked. I did a lot of uh, experimenting and I went through a few different hair dryers um, and some of them just didn't work at all. Uh, the little one I love a lot, that works great. Um, it's easier to use than my bigger one, but uh, that takes a lot of practice and just figuring out kind of the, the height of your blow dryer, the angles. Um, so, Give yourself a little, you know, room and slack if you're uh, frustrated with your Dutch pour. Um, you know, if it if you got it uh, perfect the second time, then that's awesome, you know, and congratulations. But for most people, I don't care what they say, it will take a lot of work and practice. So, because uh, it's a difficult technique, and there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, so, so don't feel badly if you're. We're coming to the end of the month for Dutch Pour Month, our first one, and you don't have any paintings you really like. Um, all those attempts you tried, what the, what they will add up, you know, and they will kind of, uh, you'll remember that in your subconscious. And when you maybe put the Dutch Pour aside for a little while, come back to it a little later, you might be surprised that it, it's a lot easier. And the more you push and try to work at it and uh, power through to make it work, you know, the results you're going to get are probably going to be worse. Um, so because you can't really force it to work, it kind of, uh, uh, it's hard to explain really, but you just have to kind of take it easy. The easier it is, the better your results really. So um, the harder you try, kind of the harder it gets. And one of the big problems with the Dutch pour is overworking with the blow dryer. So I'm going to try to avoid that. Uh, I've done that a lot. Um, so just a few little blows and you're pretty much done. So, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm using the big blow dryer, which is more difficult to work with. But, um, and if it doesn't work, no big deal. You can always scrape it and try again. So, um, but I just wanted to point that out that, you know, these are hard. This is a hard technique. And I know it looks really easy. Uh, when people are doing it on videos, or if I'm doing it and it looks easy when I'm doing it, it takes a lot of practice um, and it is not that easy. So the easier it looks usually means it's pretty difficult. So anyway, enough of that, you know, you know, blabbering on. 
let's uh, layer some paints or put out our base coat and see what we can get. So I think I'm going to try a a split a split um, base Dutch pour. Let me flip the camera around so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And here we go. So I think I'll go white up here and then the blue down here. And hopefully I have enough. I'm just going to kind of pour on some white. And down here, I'm going to pour on some blue. This kind of a blue violet. I really love this color. It's a Liquitex Basics color. It's called light blue violet, funny enough. I think I'm, I'm going to need a little more white. I want a little more white than, than um, the blue. Whenever I'm doing any kind of a something like this, like a split base Dutch pour, I don't want to do like a 50-50. I don't want to have you know, 50% white, 50% blue. I want one to be the focal point. Um, so maybe 60 or 70% and the other one to be maybe 20 or 30%. So we never want to go half and half. So we always want to have more of one than another. It w and that's with all the different colors and things. So let me blow this out and see what we get. This is just our base coat. So I'm going to blow it out. I'm I'm holding the dryer pretty much straight up and down when I blow out my base coats. And I like to start high so um, I can, it doesn't just blow everywhere on me. So I like to start high and then kind of work my way down towards the paint. Here we go. Okay. All right. So that's okay. I don't mind like the little bits of blending here and there. I think that's all right. But um, let us start to put some color on here. Um, and now another big problem is putting on too much paint to blow out. I've, I struggle with that a lot, putting on way too much paint. So now I'm very conservative, you know, usually with how much uh, paint I lay on there. And I like to like have these little cups and I will, um, you know, put paint in these little cups to kind of control it a little bit better. Um, that's probably a good idea. So I'm going to put some of this dark in here. This is kind of this black Payne's gray color. Maybe I'll put that on first. And I'm just going to kind of run, run a thin line up. I don't want to get too fancy with my lines. I just want to keep it pretty simple. Uh, next up, I'm going to use this kind of purpley color. Just put a little bit in there. And let's see. I might not use all of these colors. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this um, kind of funny uh, color I mixed up. I kind of like that. And let's see. I'd like to put some orange in there. Just, I don't know why, but seems like a good idea. Um, so let's stick some of that in there. And maybe I'll put that, I'll stop right there. And I won't, I need to put this down. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to put gold the rest, maybe overlap the gold a little ways up. And I don't want to put, i put the little bit of gold in here. And so go, I'll take it a little easier on the gold and I won't even go all the way off. Well, that's pretty close, but it's okay. So what else do we have? I have some of this metallic white 
And I think that might be kind of fun. So I'm going to put some just kind of right in the middle area here. Maybe that's good enough. And what else? Do I need anything else? Maybe I'll put a little bit of this um, more red violet in. Just a tiny bit. Okay, so that's plenty of paint. That's probably a little too much paint. Um, but uh, I think, you know, let's go with that. We have a lot of colors there. I have no idea if it's going to look any good, but we'll uh, find out in a second. So let's, uh, I'm going to get the blower and uh, I'm going to do a double blow over. I think that would be a cool thing to do. I'm going to put white. Let's see, I'll put white up here. No, I'll put white down here. I'm changing my mind. So I'm going to put some white down here. I'm going to blow the white over this way. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put some blue down here and blow that over this way. And where did my blue go? Here we go. So here's some blue. And I'm just going to blow over like one side on each of those. So I think we're ready to do something. Let's give it a shot. And I've got my dryer. Hopefully this is not too loud for you. So um, here we go. I'm going to give it a give it a go. Okay, so I did the kind of double blow over thing. And now I'm going to, I've got like a ton of paint right here, which might be an issue, but we'll find out soon. What I'm gonna do is just work like a small area at once, instead of trying to blow the whole thing out at once. Um, that's what I did on the Thursday night demo. I did like one small little area, and then I stopped and I moved on to another little area. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna blow this like up this way. Um, and then see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so it kind of looks a little muddy to me. That's the orange and the black and then the violets. Um, so I'm not in love with it, but it's kind of interesting. So it's kind of got a lot of grays in it. Um, but right down here, I'm going to like leave that alone for now. I kind of like those edges. So we'll just leave that, a, leave that be for a bit. Um, up here, I'm going to blow this way, I think. I want to... I'm going to probably blow in both directions, but I'm going to start and blow from here down. So let's see what happens with that. Here we go. So that looks very cool. We got some like kind of cool cells here. Um, yeah, it's kind of wild. There's a ton of paint here. I don't know. I don't want to blow any more off. It's going to wreck all this cool stuff. But so that's kind of what I'm talking about overworking. Um, you know, blow one little part out and see what see what happens. Then blow another little part out. I think I like that. I'm not going to touch it too much. I don't think. Now this over here, I kind of like this big white negative space, and I like this smaller blue negative space. So I don't want to do a whole lot of going up this way and wreck that negative space. So I think I'm going to blow more in this direction, like kind of straight across to kind of blow this paint out, in theory anyway. Let's find out <laughs> if I can do it or not. So here we go.
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I got kind of that blended together. Um, and I still kind of kept this nice white negative space. I think, you know, let's see. I'm just looking at, I like these, this like sharp line over here. It kind of uh, follows these sharp lines over here. I'm wondering if this is too much though. I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't know if I want to do anything else. I've got a little um, white. I got to put a little base coat there. And um, let's see, I'll get some feedback from the, uh, from the crowd. Let's see. Novala is saying, please stop. It's really lovely. <laughs> Thanks for that, Novala. Um, I think I will stop at this point. I really like these lines. Uh, I really like to have, uh, it's very difficult to kind of control the stuff in, you know, Dutch pour or any fluid art technique, but to have these very fluid, um, uh, blended lines and then sharp lines. Um, I love a combination of the two. Um, so I think I'm going to just stop right there. I like this a lot. So. Uh, even though it's a little kind of muddy, a little gray, um, I think it turned out kind of kind of interesting and, and fun. So I will stop right there. So and uh, and again, you know, if I, if you're thinking like I kind of like it, should I mess with it anymore? That's usually a good indication of maybe you should stop. So I'd like to heed those warnings rather than just you know jumping in and keep on playing with it. There's always another painting down the road that you can blow out. So um, I think I'm going to end with that one. And I'm gonna, got just a couple corners to touch up with paint, but that's it. And I think um, we'll call that good for the, the super fast um, Dutch pour demo. But let me see if there, if you have any questions, I'm gonna flip back here. Um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, throw them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I'm going to just see if there's anything I missed from earlier. And let's see. All right. I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay. Okay. Um, Monique has a question. Um, and she said she submitted a uh, Dutch pour for our uh, monthly art show, which is like a little fun contest we do. Um, she says, my painting for the art show dried really dark. All the colors faded into black. Did I do something wrong? Am I using uh, cheap paints? Um, my first... I'll have to take a look at the painting again, but it was a very pretty painting, kind of on the darkish side. Uh, as I recall, you had like, like a black base coat and kind of some like red violet um, and like kind of magenta colors and kind of violet colors, if I recall. Uh, one thing could be my first instinct or my first thought is um, you're using... Uh, uh, transparent or semi-transparent colors, like the magenta, um, is usually a transparent color. And when it dried, uh, it just went transparent. And so the black is shining through uh, the magenta and it kind of disappears. That's my first thought. So maybe take a look at your the paint tubes you used and hopefully they will have like a little square on them to indicate if it's an opaque color, semi-transparent or transparent color. Um, that's one of the big problems with um, having dark base coats is if you put transparent or semi-transparent colors on top, um, when they dry, the base coat kind of takes over everything and because um, it shines through the color. I have a feeling that might be the, the problem, Monique. But uh, let's see. But that's a great question, though. Um, and I don't think you did anything wrong. It's, it's just inherent with the colors you used. And we've talked about that a little bit in the past. And let's see. 
anything else. Um, thanks for the great comments, everyone. I appreciate that. Everyone, a lot of people said stop. <laughs> so I'm glad I stopped. Um, and Lily is asking, what about the dark color? Uh, is it only in one place? Um, like this color, like in this painting, I put the dark, this is like a, the little black color right here. Um, I put one line through kind of the whole thing. Um, but like a lot of this stuff covered it up. Like, so this is covering the dark place. This showed up pretty nicely here. Over here, it blended a little bit. Um, so yeah, some colors will kind of disappear based on what is kind of being blown over them. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that was what your question was, uh, Lily. And Monique is saying um, black base coat, red, blue, and violet. Um, yes, going back to Monique's pore that disappeared. I have a feeling that um, you know the blue, it depends on what blue it was. Uh, there are transparent blue, semi-transparent, uh, red and violet. Those I'm thinking could be um, more transparent colors that um, they, and the black is just kind of shining through everything. So the way to fix that is to um, you know check your paints, of course, and if they are transparent, we can try to make them a little more opaque by adding an opaque color to them. So if you have, for instance, um, let me grab, uh, let's see, what could I demonstrate? Like there are a lot of transparent reds. Um, and if you have a transparent red, you can, you can also buy an opaque red, like uh, Liquitex Basics Pyrrol red is opaque, or get some kind of other opaque color that would complement red very well, like um, even like an orange or something. And you can kind of beef up the uh, opacity of those colors. Um, that's what I try to do. Or even if you have a like an opaque gold color, um, you could put some of that in with the red and that'll kind of um, add some opacity to the red and, and so it won't like disappear on you. So, and uh, that's great though, Monique. We'll, we'll get it. So, but thanks for a good question and thanks for asking that. And uh, let's see. And Angela is asking, is it too late to submit? No, not at all. Um, uh, you can submit any time up to the end of the month. And I think we're going to have the art show around the 9th of December or 10th of December. So I'll let you know when we're getting close, but please submit any time. So you have plenty of time, Angela. That's uh, no problem. And you can just um, submit in the private Facebook group, the Pouring Studio Facebook group, and ju just submit it there and use... Um, put hashtag November art show in your post. That'll be helpful and help me like find them, which is always helpful. So thanks Angela. And then Donna is asking, what is the reason my paint doesn't move? I think the number one reason your paint is not moving with the blow dryer is it's too thick. So in that case, I would add more water and get it, um, get it so it's you know very runny. And um, it should be able to, I mean, you should be able to blow it uh, even on the lowest speed of the little tiny dryer, which is pretty, you know, it does not have a lot of power. So um, that is my, uh, I think that's probably the problem. It's still too thick. So, and it doesn't have to, I mean, it's kind of, a, um, you know, it's a thin, thin paint. It's a thin mixture. It's not as thin as water, but it is very thin. And um, so if, if you're if it's not moving, just keep adding water um, until you get this. Until you it stirs really easy and it streams right off the stick and straight into the cup with like zero mound, and you'll be in good shape, Donna. Great question. And uh, Jerry missed the painting. Can you can I show it again? Absolutely. Um, let's see. Let's flip back here. So here is the painting. So I did kind of a split uh, base coat. I did white up here and then this kind of uh, blue violet down here. And I used a bunch of different colors. I had, these are all leftover paints that I just grabbed quickly because I completely forgot about our demo tonight. So I just threw a bunch of stuff on there, blew it out. Um, I blew it very kind of, not super crazy, but I was, I blew this area first, then stopped and 
took a look at it. Then I blew this area down here and then this little tiny section up here. So it was very quick, like three different uh, times blowing it. And then that was it. I stopped. So, so I definitely didn't like overblow this one. And we got a lot of cool cells happening kind of down here. So, because that is one of the problems is just like blowing and then you blow again. If I was to go and blow this again, we're going to get way more blending and, the, and all the colors are going to kind of get muddied and blended together. So yeah, you have to be, you know, kind of restrain yourself with the blow dryer um, and do just a couple passes and then call it a day. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just checking for other questions. I'll I'll just leave it on the our painting here for a minute. And uh, Monique again, she says it doesn't say if it's transparent or not. Um, okay, one test. Let me go flip back here quick. And this is great for um, everybody. Um, if your paints, if you don't know if your paints are transparent or opaque, um, here is a test for you. If you take a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard or something white, um, preferably like paper, like a poster board or something like that, um, squirt out some, or even like a paper plate if it's white, um, and just get a brush, like a simple brush, and um, take your black if you have black, and just just paint like a like a strip of black, and then let that dry, and. And then so you have like a strip of black on uh, a white background. Let me see if I can draw this out. Because this is a great test to do to test your colors for transparency or opacity. So let me just draw this quick. It's very, very simple. Let me grab a, I'll just use my Sharpie to make it easy. So here's like a piece of paper. And I'll show you this in a second. My Sharpie is dying. Um, poor Sharpie. This thing has lasted me a long, long time. So anyway, first step is to just have a piece of paper like this and then paint like a strip of black down the piece of paper. And try to keep it as uh, so the paper is not shining through. So keep it rather um, opaque, like a kind of a not super thick, but you know, just so it's covering all the white. Then let that dry completely. Then take your other colors, the ones you're, you have uh, questions about, and paint a strip the other way. And they don't have to be this big. This is like, here we go. So, so they don't have to be like this long one here, um, but more like this bottom one. So let's say this is uh, the red. So you put like the red, you just paint a strip of red across the bottom and make sure it kind of covers the black um, and, and kind of like an even coat. And then up here, maybe violet or whatever, whatever colors you're, you're, you have a question about. Then let this dry. And if these are transparent colors, the black will show right through the red. If it's an opaque color, the red should cover the black up. So, and if it's a semi-transparent color, um, you should be kind of like 50-50. You know, you'll see some of the red, but you also see some of the black coming through. This is a very easy way to test your, your paints and your colors if they are opaque, uh, transparent, or semi-transparent. And maybe I'll do just a, a simple one of these with some uh, different colors, and I'll show you next week. Um, but give them a shot. If uh, you're in question about whether, you're, whether your colors are uh, transparent or opaque, um, a simple test like this will let you know. And then you can keep this if these colors you want to use over and over. And it's kind of like a, a nice little color um, sample for you. Um, and you can refer to it again and again. So um, so that is a, and that that's a, they talk about that in a lot of different, like watercolor, they talk about that, acrylic paints. Um, so that is a, a super simple test you can do. And then you'll, you'll know if your paints are um, transparent, opaque, or semi-transparent. So hope that helps uh, because not all paints say what they are on them. Um, so that's a great, great uh, 
Great question, Monique. So, and Naval is saying she does not do Dutch pours, which is fine. You don't have to. Uh, can you submit something else to the art show? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever you want, really. Um, just submit some kind of painting. The whole point is just to get you um, creating some new, uh, you know, pourings or paintings um, and just to have some fun. So, yeah, submit anything you want. If you wanted to, uh, try something with this, one of the split complementary color schemes we've been working on this month. That would be awesome, but it's not necessary. So, yeah, submit whatever you would like. Okay. And let's see here. Any other questions? McLovin has joined us. Hey, McLovin. And uh, and Noelle is full from yesterday. So am I. <laughs> I am very full from yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Hope you all had a wonderful um, Thanksgiving, by the way. Uh and you're very welcome, Monique. Um, I'm glad that was helpful. Um, yeah, and that's that's good for everyone to do if you're at all in question about like our little transparent, opaque question we had. So, and cool. And Naval is saying um, someone sent me paint for a split complimentary job. Awesome. Well, isn't that nice of them? That's great. So, um, yes, fantastic. So. Jerry likes that test idea too. Yeah, it's a great one. So, and you can use that over and over again. Um, some people do that with all of their paints, like every color they use, they'll make a test like that. Um, it comes in very handy. So maybe I'll do one of those and I'll show you what I come up with um, next week. So, all right. Cool, all right. So I don't see any other questions. Um, if you have some, uh, please throw them in there and I'll be happy to answer them. And um, for our members that have joined us, uh, um, I'm debating. No, I'm going to keep it secret. So I'm just going to talk about next month's technique, but I think I'll keep it secret for the moment. I'll, I'll let you know on Monday. So, all right. So any other questions? And if not, um, I'm going to go eat pie now. So pie is what's for dinner or dinner. So, well, I'll give you one final shot uh, of the painting. Here is the painting we came up with on the fly with zero preparation. Um, it turned out pretty nice, uh, a little muddier than I, I would like, but, uh, but I like a lot of things in it. So um, it's kind of fun. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I really love these edges right here. These sharp edges, they just uh, look so cool next to all of our really feathery uh, soft edges up there. So, all right. Okay, so that's one sh last shot of that. Um, and uh, Lily is asking, am I going to continue the color wheel instruction? Um, yes, well, we'll be continuing for sure. Um, I haven't, I'm playing with a couple different things of, for like our studio chat, um, for this month, this upcoming month, it might involve some color theory or I might uh, do a lesson on composition. Um, that might be very fitting, even though it's gonna be very hard, very difficult to kind of control it in the technique we'll probably be doing, but, um, we'll see, we'll see maybe a combo of the two, but yeah, that'll be an ongoing uh, ongoing thing with uh, color theory, composition, um, lots of different things. So, um, but yes, we'll be, we'll be doing all kinds of stuff. And um, Jerry thinks like a composition lesson would be great. Yeah, I think so too. Composition is kind of one of the big ones. It's like one of the big, the big rocks as far as art goes. You have, um, as far as like the big things I think about, in all of art and painting, I think about number one, value is what I think about probably most. Number two, color. Number three, composition. And um, is there something else? I don't know. I don't know. We got, yeah, value, color, composition. Those are kind of the three biggies, the, the big ones. 
Um, and then edges are also very important. Um, I think edges are important. They're very crucial in drawing and like more realistic type painting edges. We, and, um, but I like to have them in, also in our fluid art. And with edges, what I'm talking about is we have like hard edges, sharp edges, uh, soft edges, um, kind of middle edges, which are kind of uh, more subtle edges, and then lost edges. So edges are very critical for like drawing, portraiture, still life, landscape, um, where you can control them really well. Um, but I also like to see if I can get them in our paint pouring too, because you know a, a variety of edges, um, just like I mentioned here, let me show you again. Um, so just what we did just now, we have kind of a, a variety of edges. We have these really hard edges right here, which I like. And up here, we've got these kind of very soft edges that are kind of these like feathery edges. And in here, these are almost, this blue is almost a lost edge. So it almost disappears into our white. And we do have some lost edges in here, like the purple transitioning into like this white here, that's kind of a lost edge. And then there's lots and lots of like in between edges, kind of like uh, in between the really hard and the really soft edges. So, um, so I like a variety of edges. It just, it all creates more interest in the painting, um, but it's crucial for like portraiture or, you know, figure drawing, landscape, that kind of thing. So, Alrighty, so let me go back there. So um, yeah, I'm still kind of working on um, what, I, what we're going to do this month. I know what technique we're going to do. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, and then like to supplement that, I'm kind of coming up with what I think would be some good ideas. So I think, yeah, maybe a composition lesson or something like that. We'll see. So, but... Uh, Um, let's see. Anything else? I'm just checking to see if there's any other questions. We've got a lot of comments in the uh, old comment box there. Cool. And uh, Jerry wants a hint. Um, can we have a hint? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a hint. If there's a good hint. Um, well, it, it involves paint, it involves cups, and the canvas. That's, a, that's about as much of a hint as I'm going to give you, <laughs> Jerry. But, uh, okay, so that's not much of a hint. But you'll, you'll know on um, Monday. And there's, I'll give you another hint. There are about, how many different ways am I going to teach this technique? Uh, one, two, maybe three. So three different approaches. Three or four different approaches to this technique. So, um, Yes. Angela says, you will be painting, is the hint. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Angela. You will be painting. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Anyway. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I think I'll, we'll wrap it up there. And uh, um, it was really fun, actually. I think we've got kind of a fun painting. Um, but thanks for joining me. And, uh, and uh, Monique is like anxious to know about next month. Monday, you will know. I will. I guarantee it. Um, but yes, have a great weekend. Um, uh, Donna, you have a great weekend. Everyone have a great weekend. Um, I hope you had a wonderful holiday and, um, uh, we'll talk again very soon next week. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of work over the weekend and, uh, getting ready for next month, which is going to be really fun. So, um, take care. We'll talk really soon and, um, just have a, have a nice relaxing time. If you feel like overwhelmed with your painting by any chance, take a break. You know, it's always nice to take a little break. Um, if you're, you know, feeling kind of discouraged. So take a little break and we'll go at it again in a, with a totally new, new technique in December. Awesome. So, um, and Diane is asking, uh, is it on the calendar? Uh, not yet. It will be on the calendar either Sunday or Monday, but more, more likely Sunday. So, but keep a lookout. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. I will uh, talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.